scholars, it's Miss Tarleton and Skelly here, and today's math lesson is all about fractions. All about fractions. So we're going to be looking at improper fractions, we're going to be looking at reducing fractions, and we're going to be talking about mixed numbers as well. Um, specifically, we're going to start today's lesson with changing improper fractions into mixed numbers or into whole numbers. So first, let's review some of those terms that I just mentioned. Well, first, a fraction. A fraction, I've got a few of them on the board behind me, but a fraction is a part over a whole separated by a line running horizontally. A part over a whole of something. So you can have three over four, three fourths of your pizza left, or you can have one half of your cookie left. A fraction is a part over a whole. And so we typically see um, fractions where the numerator, which is the top number, and the denominator, the bottom number, where the numerator is less than the denominator. So the numerator is smaller, the denominator is larger. Those are your traditional proper fractions. Well, what makes a fraction improper? So an improper fraction is any fraction where the numerator, which is the top term, and the denominator are either equal to each other. So if I had 2 over 2, that would be improper because the denominator of 2 and the numerator of 2 are the same number, or your numerator is greater than your denominator. So for example, this number behind me, um, being highlighted by my selfie light, 7 over 4. 7 fourths, the numerator 7 is larger than the denominator of 4. So improper fractions are fractions parts over wholes, where the numerator and the denominator are either the same number or the numerator is greater than the denominator. And one thing that's going to really help us with today's lesson of changing improper fractions into mixed or whole numbers is being able to look at the fraction bar as division. So a typical division sign we've gotten used to over the years, dot a line and another dot. See that pretty well? The line could be a little more bold. Waboom! There we go. There's a division. A dot, a line, and another dot. We're super used to that. Well, guess what? A fraction's literally the same thing, but instead of dots, you have numbers. So I could have, I could have one over two. One over two. So you want to treat your fraction bar as a division bar, and that's going to really help us as we start looking at changing improper fractions into mixed numbers and whole numbers. And really quick, a mixed number is quite simply a number that's got a whole number, one, two, three, four, five, etc., and a fraction. So I might have two and one half. I might have two and one half. Two is the whole number, one half is the fraction. That makes it a mixed number. We're gonna go ahead and get ready to dive into some of these together. So stay tuned, buckle up, get your pencils ready, scholars, and we're gonna work on changing improper fractions into mixed numbers and whole numbers. See you soon. Hi scholars, so we are talking about changing improper fractions into mixed numbers or whole numbers. And so we want to remember to treat the fraction bar as a division bar. So we've got the improper fraction 7 over 4 or 7 fourths. And we want to treat that like division problem. So if we say 7 divided by 4, we can set it up this way in our workspace. 7 divided by 4. And we know that 4 goes into 7 how many times without going over? Once is right. So we put a 1 in the quotient. We multiply. That's the second step in division. 1 times 4 is 4. Third step, we subtract. 7 minus 4 is 3. You guys still with me so far? So we've divided, we've subtracted. No, we've divided, we've multiplied, we've subtracted. Fourth step is to compare. Is 3 less than 4? Marvelous. And then bring down is the last step. But do we have anything to bring down? No, we do not, scholars. So that becomes our remainder. But we've been talking about writing our remainders as fractions. And so if we do that, 3 goes in the numerator, the top part of a fraction. 
and 4, the divisor, goes in the bottom part of the fraction. And so the answer to 7 divided by 4 is 1 and 3 fourths. 1 and 3 fourths. Really quick, because I like drawing pictures, let's go ahead and let's see if there are really 7 things represented by 1 and 3 fourths. So if I have one square and I cut it into four pieces, do I still have one whole square? Awesome. So this is one. And if I have another square, but it's only, there's only three pieces shown, could I say that that's three fourths? Absolutely. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes. Seven fourths equals one and three fourths. Okay, let's go ahead and do another one. And so here we have eight over four, eight fourths. Treat the fraction bar as a division problem. So let's set that up. Eight divided by four. And we know four goes in eight evenly two times. Two times four is eight. Subtract zero. So eight fourths equals two, which is a whole number. Awesome possum. Let's go ahead and let's bring a couple more problems over. Six thirds, six over three. So if we treat that like a division bar, six is my dividend, three is my divisor. Six divided by three. Three goes into six evenly two times. Two times three is six. Subtract, we get zero. So six thirds equals two. Getting the hang of this? Let's look at one more from today's worksheet. Nine fifths, nine over five. Again, treating our fraction bar like a division sign. Nine is my dividend and five is my divisor. Nine divided by five, nine divided by five. So five goes into nine how many times without going over, scholars? Once is correct, good job. A nice big one. Step two, multiply. One times five equals five. Subtract, nine minus five is four. Compare, is four less than five? Awesome, is there anything to bring down? Nope, nope, nope. So we're gonna write our remainder as a fraction. Four is gonna go in the top part, the numerator, and five will go in the denominator. So nine fifths equals one and four fifths. Big one whole number and then four-fifths my fraction. And again, remember we want our whole number to be bigger than our fraction when we're writing those. So those are just a few from today's worksheet and I left you guys a few more to do. Let me know if you have any questions about those. All right, scholars, if you're still working along with me, stay tuned and let me get set for the next section. All right, scholars, so we're gonna talk about reducing fractions and you see this uh, number five on today's worksheet. So when we're reducing fractions, we look at our numerator, the top number, and our denominator, the bottom number, and we wanna look at their factors. Remember, factors are two numbers that multiply up to make a number. So a factor times a factor gives me a product. So if I'm reducing three ninths, let's look at my factors of three. We know we have one times three. I'm gonna separate those by a comma because I'm listing them. And then my factors of nine, we know we have one times nine and three times three. I don't need to list three two times. So look at what they have in common. They both have one and three in common, but the greatest common factor is three. So when we reduce fractions, we wanna divide both the numerator and the denominator, the top and the bottom, by our greatest common factor, our G, C, F. So dividing by three, dividing by three, 3 divided by 3 equals 1, 9 divided by 3 equals 3. 3 ninths reduces to 1 third. Let's look at the next one here. We have 4 twelfths, 4 twelfths. So again, let's look at my factors of 4. I know I have 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. Again, I'm only writing 2 once since I only need to write it once. And then my factors of 12 scholars, help me out if you remember them. 1 times 12, 2 times six, three times four. Squish them in there, but I got them all. So my factors of four are one, two, and four. 
my factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Well, I have 1, 2, and 4 in common. The biggest number is 4. That's the biggest number I have in common. So my greatest common factor, my GCF, is 4. So I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 4. Four divided by four in my numerator is one, and 12 divided by four in my denominator is three. So four twelfths reduces to one third. All right, let's do one more together. I'm gonna to slide my whiteboard over. Hopefully you can still see it and me. Ah, uh, yes, okay. I think we're in action. Six eighteenths. Yep, I'm still on frame, woohoo! So I'm looking at reducing six over 18. So my factors of six 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. My factors of 18, 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. So I actually have the first four factors of 18 in common with 6. 1, 2, 3, and 6. Well, what's my greatest common factor going to be? You're right, 6. 6 is my greatest common factor. So that's what I'm going to reduce by. And whatever I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator. Otherwise, I change the entire meaning of the fraction. I don't want to do that. I just want to reduce it. I don't want to change it all up. I don't want to mess with it. So in my numerator, 6 divided by 6 is 1. And 18 divided by 6 in my denominator is 3. 18 divided by 6 is 3. All of these reduce to one-third. Fancy that. So it isn't some type of trick when you see one-third for all of those. So again, to recap, reducing fractions, you need to know how to find your factors, and then you need to be able to identify the greatest common factor. All right, those who are sticking around with me, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, move on to the next section. Stay tuned while I get set up for that, please. All right, scholars, so we are doing some dividing and checking and we want to remember that we put the correct number in the quotient. When we estimate, sometimes we get a number and we're like, this is great! And then we go and we multiply it, and we get to the multiplication step, or even sometimes when we're in the subtraction step, and we're like, oh no, this is too big. Well, that's an easy fix. If you get a number that's too big, let's just reduce the number in the quotient by one. And we'll see some of that in today's problems. So in 2a, I have 163, I'm sorry, 164 divided by 23, a two-digit divisor. So I automatically need to make sure I'm looking at the first two digits of my dividend. Well, I see my first two digits make up 16, and 16 is smaller than 23. So I'm going to have to go all the way to the third place out and start looking there. So I'm going to go ahead and put my x's to remind myself to multiply, but more importantly to tell myself, hey, don't write any numbers there because it won't make sense. So I don't know my 23 times tables, but I do know my 2 times tables. So let's look at the 2 in 23. We ask ourselves, does 2 go into 1? No, it doesn't. But does 2 go into 16? Yes, it does. How many times, scholars? 8 is correct. So we're going to put an 8 up here. And now we multiply. Always start in the ones place. No matter where you're multiplying, always start in the ones place. So 8 times 3, 8, 16, 24. I'm going to put a 4 down under the 4 here, under the 8. I keep everything lined up with my answer in the quotient and what I'm multiplying down here. Lining up is important. And then I carry the 2. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 2 is 18. Oh boy, I can see before I even go to subtract. I got a number that was too big. And so quite simply, all I've got to do is I've got to change the number in my quotient. So instead of an 8, let's go ahead and use our fingers to erase here, or our erasers, because we do math and pencil. We're going to make that a 7. That should fit now, shouldn't it? Let's see. 7 times 3 is 21. 1 goes down, I carry the 2. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 2 is 16. Oh, that looks so much happier. 4 minus 1 is 3. 6 minus 6 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. Compare, that's less than 23. Nothing to bring down, so that's my remainder. And to check 
a division problem, you multiply your answer times your divisor. So 7 times 23, and I'm going to add that remainder of 3. So I'm going to write that as 23 times 7. The order of the factors does not change what I'm doing. And start in the ones place. 3 times 7 is 21. Carry that. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 2 is 16. Don't forget to add your remainder of 3. And my check matches, so I put a nice big happy check mark somewhere. All right, let's look at 2B. I have 168 divided by 41. Well, 41 definitely doesn't go into 1 or 16, but it should go into 168. So let's go ahead and put our x's to block out those first two places in our quotient so we don't accidentally write our answer there. And again, I don't know my 41 times tables. I mean, I know a couple of them, but, <laughs> but it gets pretty dicey around there. So I do know my 4 times tables, though, and that knowledge is going to come in handy. 4 doesn't go into 1, but 4 goes into 16 4 times. We multiply. 4 times 1 is 4. Line everything up, scholars. 4 times 4 now is 16. Oh, that's happy. I can do that subtraction. That is 4. Compare. There's nothing to bring down, so I have 4. Remainder 4 is my answer to this problem. To check a division problem, you multiply your divisor. 41 times my quotient of 4, and I will add that remainder. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Plus my remainder of 4 equals 168. Big old check mark. Let's drag the board over so we can do 2C together. Can you see 2C? There we go. We're on frame. It's a big old guessing game. I, uh, I'm not in selfie mode. <laughs> All right. So 2C, 130 divided by 24. So again, two digits in the divisor, I'm definitely not going to have an answer in the first spot. So I put an X there, and I, I can tell already that 24 won't go into 13, so I'm going to have to write my answer in the third place here in my quotient. And so, not really knowing my 24 times tables, I do know my 2's. 2 can't go into 1, but 2 can go into 13 6 times without going over. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Ooh, that's too big. That's too big. So I have to change that 6, go down one number, make it a 5. Let's erase everything I carried. Let's erase everything I multiplied. Clean slate. So starting in the ones place, 5 times 4 is 20. That's a 0, carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Oh, that looks happier already. 0 minus 0 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. Is 10 less than 24? That's the compare step. Yes, it is. Bring down. Nothing to bring down. So that becomes remainder of 10. Checking a division problem. What do we do, scholars? We multiply. That's right. We multiply the divisor times the quotient, add the remainder. Again, it doesn't matter what order of the factors you go in, but I like the bigger factor on top. You do too, I'm sure. So 24 times 5. 4 times 5 is 20. 0 goes down, I carry the 2. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Add my remainder of 10, and I get 130. All right, so that is dividing and checking and making sure that you um, have the right number in the quotient and going ahead and erasing it if it's too big. All right, good job today, scholars. Thanks for tuning into today's lesson, and I will talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.